<laughs> Hi. So my story is probably pretty similar to any of the stories that you could read in the newspapers lately. The only difference is that I have been fortunate enough to go through the addiction and come out into recovery. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when I was about 20 years old, somebody offered me a Vicodin, and I did it, and I liked it. And that started my opiate um, obsession and addiction right there. Over the next couple of years, um, it was every day trying to find a pill anywhere that I could. And as my tolerance grew, um, so then did my need for the stronger kinds of pain medications, like Oxycontin and Dilaudid, um, until, and that went on for a while until one day there there was none. I couldn't find a pill anywhere. And someone told me they could get me heroin. And I was reluctant at first, of course, because at that time when I thought about a heroin addict, I had a certain um, judgment in my head about what a heroin addict looks like, what they act like. And that wasn't me. So I didn't really want to do it, but I knew um, I was physically addicted to the pain pills, so I was going to be getting sick if I didn't get something. And the withdrawal symptoms are really, they're really awful. Um, I've gone through it a lot of times throughout my over a decade of addiction, and there were days where I just would rather have died than feel the pain that that is and that sickness. Um, so I did the heroin that time, and the next time it was offered to me, it was a little bit easier until then that was my drug of choice. My obsession every day was getting heroin. Um, so early on, I live a little over an hour from Columbus, um, and when I first got addicted to the heroin, I would travel to Columbus every day because it wasn't everywhere like it is now. Um, now it's in my small town. But back then it wasn't, and so I would come to Columbus every day, I'd get up in the morning, um, either get my kids ready for school. Um, my daughter wasn't old enough to go to school, so I would take her with me. Or if it was summertime, my son would go to the skate park. Um, and we would come to Columbus, me and um, the significant other that I was with at that time. And it was an everyday, um, an everyday thing. And we would, we'd have to call ahead of time and let the person that we were meeting here in Columbus know um, how much money we had. And we'd be there in about an hour. And when we got close, then we'd give them a call and they would tell us which exit to um, get off of and where to meet them in the neighborhood here in Columbus. And we would either um, use here or wait until we got back home and get high there, um, sell what we needed to sell, keep what we needed to keep, and do it all again the next day, or sometimes later that same day. Um, and it was... It was craziness, really looking back on it now. It's like, wow, <laughs> the things that I did um, to get that drug. My daughter, like I said, was about two at the time when I was doing that, and I brought her with. In my mind, it was safer for her to be with me than to leave her with some random person that was waiting for us to get back with the drugs. Um, we did get pulled over with her in the car with us one time. Um, that wasn't enough to make me quit. That didn't scare me enough to make me quit. Um, my son was about 13, I think, and he would go to the skate park when I made these trips. And I was about 45 minutes away. My mom calls and says, 
he's at the hospital. He'd been bitten by a dog. A complete stranger drove my son to the hospital because I was an hour away in another town scoring heroin. That was enough to make me quit. Um, my son got so angry with me one time that he went into my bedroom and found the purse that I cut my needles and my spoon in and brought it out and gave it to my mom. Just, you know, like make her stop. And that wasn't enough to make me quit. This went on for a really long time and just recently um, my mom wasn't able to be here with me today. But about seven months ago, she just looked at me, and the, the way she looked at me, she wasn't mad. Um, she wasn't really even sad. She just said, you've got to stop. And she was just so serious about it, and I could tell by the look on her face that I knew I was disrupting my life. I could feel it. I could feel the pain that I felt every day living in addiction. Um, but I really, that day, realized I was disrupting probably every single person that I came in contact with, but really the rest of my family. I was putting them through hell. And so I decided to stop. Um, and that's how I'm able to be standing here today so strong in my recovery. Um, my family has been so supportive through this. They, they never turned their backs on me. I'm sure there were times where they were pretty mad at me for some of the stuff that I've done, but they never shut me out. Um, and I'm so lucky. I, I feel so lucky and so grateful to have that, to have that support. Um, I can stand here today and not feel shame. I'm not ashamed that I was a heroin addict. Um, and my family was never ashamed of me. And I really think that prevents a lot of people from getting the help that they need because of the stigma that our society has on heroin addicts. And so that's really what my point of coming here and talking today and sharing my story with everybody, if it helps one person realize that they don't have to be ashamed, go and get that help. There's someone there that's going to have your back. Um, if that's the one thing that happens today, then all this nervousness was worth it. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs>